Is the work world confusing? Congested? Are you just trying to find your way? There must be a light at the end of this tunnel. Well, there's a way to find your calling, to find that job you want and deserve, when someone will come up to you and say, you're hired. and welcome to Your Hire, a show about jobs and careers in which we answer questions such as, how do I find work that makes me come alive? How do I get that job I want and deserve? How do I make it through yet another career transition? <laughs> well, we're going to answer th these questions and many more by having on the show knowledgeable, lively guests, and we certainly have one today. But before I introduce her, I'd like to invite you to check out the website where I recently added the 12 keys to getting a great job. If you follow those 12 keys, and I know you can, you'll be well on your way to getting the job you want and deserve. That's at www.bayareacareercoach.com. You can also sign up for my newsletter. It's at www.bayareacareercoach.com. Well, I'm really pleased that we have Dr. Cynthia Scott on the show today. She's Senior Vice President of Product Development with Lee Hecht Harrison and the author of hundreds of no, 12 no. books. <laughs> and uh, leading authority on leadership, career transitions, re-energizing the workplace. Have I left anything out? Stop, stop. You're okay. making me sound Welcome old. to the show. <laughs> Thank you, Cynthia Steve. Scott. Glad to be here. So uh, why don't we start with you just telling us a little bit about what you do, but also the path you took to, to do this. Well, I, I think the, the main thing is it's been a long road. And mm -hmm. uh, I started out being very interested in anthropology, so I majored in anthropology. I and was sociology. And oh. lived in India for a year and, and studied oh. culture and kind uh -huh. of looked at non-Western society and found that you couldn't do much with that. My dad kept saying, <laughs> you know, what are you going to do? And I thought, well, I better do something. So I uh, ended up going into health uh, anthropology and health and kind of medical anthropology. Okay. So I looked at, at health systems and then I went to Michigan and got a degree in uh, health planning and health education. And uh, then I re you know, dove into the healthcare system and spent time in uh, the nurse practitioner program at UC Davis and behavioral oh. science and creating people for the rural underserved um, uh, parts of California. Mm -hmm. And then I said, "Oh dear, I gotta. I, if you, especially when you're hanging out with medical people, you gotta be a doctor." Well, I wasn't gonna be a, a medical doctor, so I became a psychologist doctor. So it's kind oh. of a mind doctor, uh -huh. and uh, have used that in the last 20 years as I spent it as a author and a uh, consultant to organizations, trying to figure out how do you understand the people stuff that's going on in business. Mm -hmm. So I've kind of come to this role in a long. It's a long journey, but I've reinvented myself many times. You know, we almost named the show Take This Job and Love It, and it's one of your books. <laughs> it is. So I said, no, we can't name it that. No, actually, you, could, you can. <laughs> so tell us, um, your title is Senior VP of Product Development. Why don't you tell us what's going on there? Yeah. What does that mean, just in case somebody someday might be a Senior VP of Product Development? Well, it means I'm on the executive team, so there's four of us, and we sit together and really decide the direction and the strategy for our leadership consulting group. Mm -hmm. And what I do specifically is look at what the what people in the field are wanting, what our customers are wanting, and then make the products, which can be anything from an online video module to a uh, in-person coaching practices for leaders kind of program or a, um, a white paper so I write things or I also um, I support the field so there's about 35 people and 400 coaches that we that we support so when they they call me and say we want something on the aging workforce so I will then put that together for them. This seems so. related to your anthropology and psychology yeah. right? Yeah it's Isn't artifacts it? you gather artifacts you kind of catalog them you put uh -huh. them back out so people can understand them. Okay so I love making stuff Steve. I you think love it, making I, stuff? <laughs> I think I love making stuff. So um Let's introduce the concept of the second middle age. Yeah. I didn't even know what to call it. Second yeah. middle age is a career transition or career work. Or well, I, tell us what that's it's all good about. that you're grappling with it actually, am, because yeah. it, it's not something. I mean, you know, you used to have where you like retired, and then you had this retirement. Well, now what's happening, since we're all living longer, I mean, I, who had my baby after 41, according to the demographics, it says I have very good indications for living till I'm 90. 
So oh, if, really? yeah, absolutely, it's a dangerous thing. So once you once you've made it to a certain age without major health problems, then then you have this longer okay. tail that we never had before, and no no other generation has ever had that. So we are really making this up. We aren't you know we are not following in our parents' footsteps because their idea of middle age was kind of you had middle age and then you retired and then you died, mm -hmm. and so we didn't have to grapple with this kind of midpoint, which is somewhere between fifty five and 75 when you're not really old and you're not really over but what are you going to do what is this second time really about and how do you how do you shape that what do you do with your career 84% i mean i'm sorry 34% of people say they're never going to retire oh my Either yeah. because they can't or they don't want to. Because yeah. if you retire in the old form, you kind of rust out. Yeah, and, and it only takes a few months to watch all of Gilligan's Island. Well, and we always said no more plaid pants, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are we, we're not going to be like our parents. So You, you, you know, know uh, Dave Barry says, uh, he's saying for men, their midlife crisis is from 40 to 64. <laughs> and so I think you've split it into two pieces. Yeah. Well, you can maybe have two of them. Yeah. Because you have two midlives, so you can have two crises. But actually, I think it's even more like ongoing crises in some ways, really kind of looking at what you want to do. So you brought along a graphic that we're going to show the okay. audience and, and go through, okay. if it's okay, about uh, some sure. tips to make it how to deal with this 55 to 75 second yeah. <laughs> uh, crisis, yeah. uh, well, no matter what Dave Barry says, yeah. okay? Yeah. Okay, so here's some tips, and I thought I'd just read the points and then you can sure. uh, tell us what you think. Um, you recommend, and I'm going to group the first two together, to set a vision for what you want to do and try something new, stretch yourself. So can yeah. you talk about those two together? Well, oftentimes, actually, it comes out of some, some seminars I've been doing with women who are trying to figure out what to do with this middle age. And the last one we had, we had a woman who was 54 and we had a woman who was 80. So we really had a large span. And kind of the questions that they, they have are, there were usually things that they wanted to do earlier in their life that were either pushed aside or placed aside on purpose. Can you go back and kind of mine those and say, what were, what were some of the things that you kind of wanted to be but didn't? Is Whether, it that second chance at a happy childhood? Yeah, Is that yeah, a happy career childhood? Yeah, I think that's right, Steve. I think that's right. I mean, I think, I think in some ways it's the looking at things that may have been not explored but now you have some different freedoms. You have, you have kids out of, the, out of the house, maybe you're more empty nest. You can go and do things that you hadn't been able to do before. That, that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, you also say to give yourself permission to take risks and to focus, also to focus on available choices. So I'm going to yeah. group those two together. Actually, I, yeah, I think I think a lot of people kind of do that. Remember that old thing, doctor, lawyer, Indian chief? You know, yeah. how are you supposed to decide what uh -huh. you want to be? Well, what's fun now is there are so many things that have not even were not even invented when we all no went kidding. to school. Yeah. I mean, who would have thought of all the things? So, how about the, a career coach? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, absolutely, and and things that I mean, I'm thinking of my son who's 14, and like, what kind of things is he going to be doing? Because. I keep saying, how can you how can you know what you're going to major in? Because most of the things are not even invented yet. Yeah, so, yeah. so I I guess I really encourage people to think broadly, and and I kind of say, go out and explore what I call the molecular bump. You know, bump into molecules because the way molecules get heat and energy is you bump in and you get more energy. So when you find somebody doing something, that gives you an idea. You go here, you go here. Ooh, wow. So so it's important to like not sit home and sort of say, oh, what shall I do? But go out and look at what people are doing. 